Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. You can find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin and my co-host Dale on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. Welcome to the Dynasty After Dark podcast. We're here all off season helping you guys get your teams right for this upcoming 2023 season. And so far, it's been a fun off season for me. I've had a lot of trades go down in a lot of leagues. And man, I got to say... I, I I keep saying it being this far ahead of everybody else where they just catch up in, in value, you know, um, mm-hmm. I find it funny because ironically uh, the fancy footballers, if you haven't listened to their podcast or if you, if you have, they started a dynasty podcast and it's not all three of the yep. guys. Sometimes it's two of them, whatever, but I don't think Andy's been on it at all yet, actually. No, which is he hasn't. Funny. No. <laughs> but today they were doing kind of a risers and fallers on players, right? And I think we talked about this on here a couple weeks ago with the tight end rankings, right? But George Kittle, man, everyone is just down on him. Um, they yeah. have him as their tight end number six. They were talking about, you know, Mike was like, oh, yeah, I'd definitely be a high first for George Kittle, even a non-tight end premium is what he still values him at and everything like that. And uh, mm. one of the guys, I think his name is Betts, I think, um, he was talking about in his league, he was trying to sell George Kittle everywhere for fair value, and he couldn't get anybody to bite. I was like, man, that's, I'm, I'm right there too, man. That's mm-hmm. been the entire offseason. Everyone thinks he's worth something super high, but nobody's willing to pay for him. It's just super weird. I just do not understand it whatsoever. But yeah, it was it is kind of funny just seeing everybody finally starting to realize where I've been like for months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Oh, how you doing today, Dale? Hey, I'm doing good. I am exhausted, but I am really excited to roast you again. <laughs> so yeah so today we're going to be going through my 2022 uh nfl draft rankings final rankings from last year and giving some updates on these players how they've kind of changed in my my rankings so far and some predictions on and projections on how we think that they're going to be going and moving in the future so last time we did quarterbacks and running backs, realized that it was going to take way too long. <laughs> so we broke mm-hmm. this up into two episodes. Today we're going to be doing the wide receivers and the tight ends. And I got to say, man, last year everyone was like really down on that class. Oh, there's not that many. Oh, there's a few good guys at the top. But that draft class of wide receivers is just turning out to be elite, man. Elite. Absolutely. In terms of value, yes. you know. Maybe not production yes. just yet, but value. These guys are they're just all worth so much right now. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um what are your thoughts on last year's draft class? You, are you yeah, as high I, on I mean, as I am? <clears throat> yeah, I mean I, I thought it was I thought it was really good last year. I mean, I'm a I'm a pretty big homer with uh, with some of the uh Ohio State guys and, and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. So like you know, I was really excited about those guys. You know, like I thought Drake London was gonna be good. I also thought yep. Jamison Williams was going to be interesting. Um, He's still going to be eventually. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know, but you know, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I honestly thought for wide receivers that it was a very deep draft. Um, and then I feel that like this year's draft in twenty three, like it kind of flip flopped between running backs and wide receivers with their depth. I would agree with that. You know, I would definitely agree so, with that. Now. Yeah, this year's draft class is going to be very interesting. A lot of contention at the at the top there with uh man, I I'm getting more and more concerned about JSN's value um for the next couple of years, man. Everyone's taking right. him universally number 1 overall and you just think about Seattle, the more time that goes by, the more worried I am about JSN for fantasy football. Like real life football, I think he's going to be a great addition to that team, but yes, hundred percent. That team, you know, they've got Geno at the helm. They're not going to be a team that's throwing the ball thirty-five times a game, right? And right, everyone likes Zach Charbonnet for his ability to catch. Kenneth Walker has the ability to catch. Mm-hmm. Those guys are going to be a, a powerhouse duo of running backs. Where I would not be surprised if they try and run the ball forty times a game, right? Uh, just 100%. knowing Pete Carroll and yeah. If that's the case, that's not going to leave a ton of value for the receivers. And I get it. Oh, you're not really drafting them for this year. But what happens if they bring Tyler Lockett back, right? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, 
it's not entirely impossible. And if Tyler Lockett comes back next year, that still puts JSN in the slot primarily. I don't think they're going to swap those two just yet. Maybe in two mm-hmm. years' time, but man, that's a long time to wait for a for a good wide receiver. So he has to just be so good that they have to replace Tyler Lockett. I just don't. I think Tyler Lockett's a really good player, so that's what just makes me a little worried about that. So um, yeah. Yeah, this year's draft class is definitely interesting compared to last year's. The depth last year was... Yes, 100%. All right, so let's jump into it. Last year, my number one wide receiver um, was Drake London with the Atlanta Falcons. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you guys for for going over to the YouTube channel. Podcast is available on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Apple, anywhere else that you can find podcasts. I encourage you guys to go over the YouTube channel. Um, we're trying to grow that pretty heavily here this off season. Any subscription that you guys can give us, that would be great. And if you're new to the mm-hmm. channel, thank you guys for checking us out. And yeah, we're here all off season. Like I said, trying to help you guys prep your rosters for a good title run. Or you know, if you're in rebuild too, just giving you some ideas for good players to go target at fair prices, right? Where you can get them yeah. on the down low because they're going to rebound. And it's like half my teams are, they're always right. so much more competitive because, Oh, they're not the sexy players. Right. But they're the good players. So, um, Drake London is a perfect example of a buy low in my opinion right now, because hundred percent last year, not the best season. Right. And you look at his stats at the end of the year. And I was actually surprised going back and looking at it again. 117 targets. It did not feel like he had 117 targets. No, he did not. Um, 72 catches, 866 yards, 7.4 yards per target, 12 yards per catch. Um, Four touchdowns, which you like to see, but we all know the story. They were with Marcus Mariota for a majority of the season, and if you're looking through the game log, it's just kind of crazy. First couple weeks, he's averaging 7, 12, 6, 7, 7, and then just black hole of targets four one five seven six three four twelve um and then desmond ritter comes in and this is why i'm higher on desmond ritter than a lot of people out there eleven nine eight eight we didn't have kyle pitts for this stretch so how that's all going to shake out we have no idea but the if you look at the projections the season long um Um, projections for Desmond Ritter in his four game sample size he was averaging about 32 pass attempts per game compared to Marcus Mariota of about 25 so everyone's Mm -hmm. saying oh they're going to want to run the ball more because they got Bijan it's not true they're going to want to throw the ball more with Desmond Ritter they did it with Desmond Ritter so um, I think that it's it's kind of a everyone doesn't like Atlanta for the passing game they like it for the run game, which right. obviously I get that. But I do think there's a lot of value in Kyle Pitts and Drake London right now because they're going to take a big step forward with Desmond Ritter. Now, it's not going to be pretty the entire time, right? But, um, I mean, if you look at his four games with Ritter, Drake London was averaging six uh, six catches a game for about 75 yards, no touchdowns, but still that's not not bad at all. You see a couple touchdowns here and there. Very good stats for a year two wide receiver. What are your thoughts on Drake London? Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> no, I, 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 I do really like Drake London. You know, I don't think, I mean, I would, I would have different rankings. Obviously, um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I think worst there's rankings, other right? players. What's that? It's a worse rankings. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think mine would be better, but you uh, know, anyways. Uh, in anyways, I mean, I, I do really like London, and I sure. do agree with you. Like, he is a buy low candidate because because people are a little down on him, and mm-hmm. typically typically the second year is the better year, mm-hmm. you know, of 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 the two, uh, you know. So, I mean, if 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 you can, I'd be buying him. I, I I would I would try to be scooping him up as as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the trouble that I get into is that a lot of people that have Drake London don't have a very good team and then they don't want to trade them away. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's, it, it's, they're always wanting youth. They're all, you know, always wanting youth. And right. um, that's dynasty one oh one. It, it is. Youth, it right? is. And it's it, hard yes, when Drake 100%. London's 21 years old. <laughs> it's, hard to, 100%, it's hard to give that up. hundred percent. Right? Yeah, it is. It, 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 it definitely is. 
And I think he's going to be worth the wait here in a year or two once the offense starts to, you know, move a little bit and, and, and become very efficient. Right. So, yeah, I, I do think that Drake London's in for a massive upswing in targets. Uh-huh. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to re-rank these guys yet because there's really no point to it yet. You yeah. know, yeah. you look at my top six and and quickly I'll go over my top two tiers from last year, right? In tier one, I had Drake London, Jamison Williams, and Traylon Burks. Just those three guys. In tier two, right behind them, I had Garrett Wilson, George Pickens, and Chris Olave. So, you know, it, it's not like I, I was massively down on the two OSU guys, but I just like the upside of the other three more, right? Well, obviously, after year one, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, look, they're ranked as the high, higher players. You know, they looked right. better in year one. But at the same time, situations matter a lot. Like, they do. Uh, New yes. Orleans was probably the only one with a competent quarter, like, you know, uh, a competent quarterback. What Garrett Wilson did in yeah. in New York was impressive, <laughs> juggling between Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. Mike White, all those other guys. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's impressive that he was able to be as productive as he was. And obviously that's going to make him vault up rankings. But you compare him to a Drake London, right? And we'll just pull that up really quickly. You know, he had 147 targets compared to 117 for Drake London. Like, Mm -hmm. that's a lot more targets. A lot. He he only had an extra, uh, what is it, nine catches? Yeah, nine extra, or 11 extra catches for 300 yards. So, obviously, he was much better after the catch Mm -hmm. than Drake London was. But, man, he he was not super efficient with all those targets. You gave well, 100... well, I, 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 I think the problem was was that Zach not Wilson, right? Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. horrible <laughs> they targets. weren't great. Yeah, In reality, horrible. it was more like 130, 125. Yeah. But still, I'm yeah. just saying it's a lot of yeah. volume that Drake London didn't get mm-hmm. to see. So you know, putting yeah. Garrett Wilson as a lot of people are as the wide receiver four in Dynasty. We're crowning them just a pr- little pretty crazy. Yes, yeah, yes, we're, I we're agree. crowning these guys just too quickly, right? Chris Olave yeah. again, um, pulling up him really quickly. He was decent last year, but 119 targets. He had a few more yards than Drake London. All three of mm-hmm. these guys had four touchdowns, but Chris Olave had Andy Dalton, who is a better quarterback than both Desmond Ritter. As much mm-hmm. as you don't like the Red Rifle, he was better than Desmond Ritter he's, and Marcus Mariota. He's, he's definitely he's, competent. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely a competent quarterback. Um, and then the entire holistic team approach as well, like. Chris Olave didn't have to necessarily be the number one. They they used him a lot as the number one guy, but there was uh, um, Ahid Shahid is out the guy. There's you know um, yeah. there's another guy. I forget his name. The fast guy Marquez uh, Holloway. Is that it or, or or is it Godwin or, or Goodwin? No, that's the Olympic sprinter guy. <laughs> but yeah, there was another guy yeah. on the team that was like playing as the number one outside guy, leaving Chris Olave a little bit more in the slot to yeah. get open a little bit more that way. So you know, these guys obviously have vaulted up. Chris Olave is the dynasty wide receiver number eight. Garrett Wilson's the dynasty wide receiver number four. Both of these guys are ahead of Drake London, and I think that Drake London has still has the potential to be better than these guys. And that's not even including the other two guys that I had ranked above them, Traylon Burks uh, with Tennessee. So Traylon Burks, you know, had an injury marred season. He really didn't, he had, he saw the field a little bit early on in the season, didn't get many targets in the beginning of the season. Um, finished the year with 54 targets total, not even half of what those other three guys got. 33 catches for 444 yards. Dude was a monster after the catch. He averaged more yards per target than those guys. Only had one touchdown. Traylon mm-hmm. Burks is somebody that I think has a much higher ceiling than all three of these guys. Um, originally, he was my wide receiver one. I moved him right behind Drake London last year as my number two guy. But man, I, I love what Burks has the potential to do. You know, if it wasn't for the injuries and then Tennessee kind of had the wheels come off. They lost uh, Mm -hmm. Ryan Tannehill for a stretch there. So, you know, I think against Houston, (laughs) Traylon Burks had an 82% snap share, but that was Malik Willis where he only had like seven passing attempts in the entire game. So it's like, uh, 
you know, that counts as a game, but so his per game averages are going to go down, but it's not a fair comparison. You know what I mean? So, um, any thoughts on Traylon Burks versus the rest of these guys? Uh, I do like Burks, but, um, I think the big thing is, well, I, I know he's going to have a huge target share this year. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably, it's probably going to be, you know, 30, 35%. It's going to be massive. Yes. So, That that is a good thing, but uh, I mean, you know, of, of a of a thirty to thirty five percent target share, you know, compared to you know, like a Garrett Wilson who's probably going to get you know twenty twenty five potentially. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, with Aaron Rodgers, I, 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 that's the other I risk with Garrett see, Wilson yeah, too, it right? Is, it is. You know, Aaron Rodgers comes in, and we all think Garrett Wilson should be the number one guy, and I I would put my money on it, but mm. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a he does it his way, right? And if I know. you mess up and, one and route, I, look at I, I, Christian I still, Watson. <clears throat> right. And, and and I get that, but still I would much rather have the targets from Aaron right. Rodgers than I oh. would of 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 a Malik or of a of a Will Levis slash Ryan Tannehill hey, offense. That's Taney's good. I know Taney's good. I get it, but it they're still not gonna be I don't think the offense is going to be anything spectacular so yeah i mean i mean i i would i would probably have wilson london and then maybe like olave burks as a like my three four personally that's so, fair that is fair yeah I, yeah yeah i mean again, I, 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 I i yeah i, I kind of see it more like that 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 i really love garrett wilson i think he's he's the best of the bunch and then like drake london has a lot of talent and he has a lot of potential in that offense and then and then and then Burks just has the target share, you know, and it's just if he they is can get too, though, to be, to he, be he does he 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 is very talented, right? You know, he is he is. I I don't disagree with that. <laughs> um, it, it's 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 just he needs the these other guys. They have they have, have all the talent. Yeah. Burks just has target. <laughs> it's right. Funny the way well, but, <laughs> it was phrased. but you know, yeah. So yeah, but and then and then for the other two guys you had with George Pickens and. Mm-hmm. Jamison Williams. I feel those guys are very, very, uh, very like I don't I don't want to use the word buzzwords. Is is is, is not the word I want to use. But but you know they're they're very uh, polarizing. Polarizing. Thank you. I cannot think of words today. There we go. But um, there we go. Uh, yes, they they are very very polarizing figures because uh, George Pickens was like the darling last year. It felt like. Yeah, and and it really did, and you know he he was getting a lot of Kenny Pick, uh, a Kenny Pickett targets, which right. are interesting. So, <laughs> I so you know, I I think that's going to be I I, th- I think I I mean, and I don't feel he's the number one in that offense. So I don't know. So yeah, do you want to talk about Jamison first, or do you want to talk about Pickens? Let's talk about let's talk about Jamison. Okay. So I already are, I already put out a um, review, a a side video of Jameson Williams a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Ironically, it came out like three days before he got suspended. So you know it's a it's a little bit of a different take now. But Jameson Williams has an unfair negative rep associated with him right now, and you know in his six games or whatever yeah six games yeah he played six games at the end of last year he had nine targets one catch oh he only had one tar- nine targets he's so good he was a first round player he was he was also recovering from an ACL it was only nine months removed from the ACL you know mm-hmm. which is incredibly fast from that or maybe it was 10 months maybe um but it was just really really quick for him to get back on the field definitely wasn't 100 percent guaranteed his only catch was a 41 yard touchdown i think he had two other bomb plays called back on penalties you know two of the other uh incompletions were penalties that didn't count but right like he was very good in the limited use that he did get everyone is expecting him oh he he's out there playing for six, six games right he should be 90 percent snap share but that was never Detroit's plan. They were going for a playoff push. They didn't have a chance to work with Jamison Williams in training camp. You know, they had no rapport with him and Jared Goff. And in week 13, when he makes his first start, 
he's not going to instantly have that rapport. They don't have time at that yeah, point to absolutely. build any chemistry. They have all off season this year. You know, it's unfortunate with the suspension and everything, but they're still going to be able mm-hmm. to build that until that suspension kicks in. Right. Um, so I think the suspension doesn't kick in until preseason, if I remember right. I, so I, I think that sounds about right. He can go through all of training camp and everything <clears throat> with Jared Goff healthy this time. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, Jamison Williams still has the potential to be a star, like a superstar, but everyone's pointing to the fact that, oh, we only played 20% of snaps when he, when he was on the field. Yeah. Cause he was the number four wide receiver for the team. Cause they didn't have time to get him up to speed. Like it's just, it, it's not his fault. They always plan this. They traded up from 32 to 12 to draft him. They're going to use this guy a lot. They are going, they like their guys. Look at Jameer Gibbs, right? They're going to use these guys a lot because they traded up for him. And, you know, I just think that it's, it's kind of crazy to me that people are just like, Oh, he's a bust already. It's like, what are we doing here? What? Let, let's give him a chance, you know, with, with an actual healthy off season. Right. And I get that, but I, I think like, would you rather have Garrett Wilson or Jameson Williams? Well, obviously, Garrett Wilson. No, no, no. Healthy, I'm just, right? I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just, you know, I'm, right, I'm just right, asking. Like, right. would you rather have, would you rather have George Pickens or Jameson Williams? Jameson. Okay. I'd rather have Jameson than Olave. Um, I, it's, I, the, I, uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna. I think I would rather, I would rather have somebody that I know is going to be, like, I feel Jameson's way too boomer bust, and possibly. I feel we don't know. That's I the feel, problem, right? Well, he, he, he. He was the deep, uh, so he was a deep threat, um, in you know in 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 the in the Alabama offense, right, right. So true, but that's the thing. I mean, you can find more ways to get those guys the ball in space, right? He doesn't necessarily yeah, have to be yeah. just a deep threat, but we don't know how how Detroit's going to use him. That's the problem. We're all kind of speculating on what his role is going to be. And it's possible that they just use him on the outside, right? As the deep speed guy, but it's also impossible that they use him as more of a possession receiver and try and, you know, more CD lamb him in the middle of the field where they play him and he, he, they get the ball short and let him, you know, work his magic after the catch kind of thing too. We don't really know, but yeah, that's just the only the only question, right? Is is how are they going to use this guy, and then how good is he going to be in that role, right? So, Jamison Williams, I still think has the a lot of potential. I do understand people wanting to move on. If you can sell him for good value, you know, fair value, mm-hmm. where you're getting top four wide receiver value from last year, you know, if you could get right. what the same as what you got for Drake London as last year, I would be doing that, but. I just I don't think you will for Jamison. I think I I'm like I I I drafted Jamison over Olave, and I I will still regret that for a while. And I don't know if you will. uh, I don't. I I I think I will. Personally, (laughs) Um, I I I, like I just don't think I think Jamison's too boomer bust the to be reliable. Like I would rather have someone who I know who's going to get targets, who's going to who's a like I, I I just. Well, well, I, 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 I feel there's a reason why Jamison Williams transferred from Ohio State to Alabama. That's because eh, he's not I as good know. of a wide receiver as Chris Olave and Garrett, and, and, and Garrett could Wilson. Be, it could be usage too. Like I don't know. Well, that, that, well, that, that, well, that, that. I, I feel that's part of it, but you know, also. I don't know. I mean. Joe Burrow went from Ohio State to LSU and was like a, the number one overall big. Like, like I get it to an extent, but at the same time, like mm-hmm. with the new transfer portal, I don't know. I don't. All just just dumb to me now. It's just everyone's switching but, just to switch and it's right. Kind of stupid. But 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 still, like I mean, I, I feel that I feel that he he it's was possible I mean, that they're he's, better. He's, though. He, he's, I, he's very ta- he's point. he's very talented, but I feel he. He's just the speed guy. Like, like right. I, I kind of feel, I, I feel that he's a better Jalen Hyatt. It's possible, but you know who, in, in you know who Jalen Hyatt had? Hand and Hooker. Let's go, baby. Uh, so, uh, all right. So that's enough to talk about Jamison Williams. I'm still yes. high on Jamison Williams. Again, the problem with right. ranking these guys right now is we have no idea. Like I said, Traylon Burke's first year was marred by injury. Jalen Jamison Williams didn't even get to really play, and now he's suspended for six right. games. So. 
we're going to have to wait even longer to see what he can do. George Pickens, we'll go to him really quickly. He had Kenny Pickett, like you mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone's kind of expecting him to be the number two on this team. But, dude, I'm not sold that Deontay Johnson is going to be the number one guy here. Like, Deontay Johnson, I've never been the biggest fan of Deontay Johnson, ever. And, you know, there was a lot of rumors that him and, and uh, Mitch Trubisky were getting into it, him and Kenny Pickett were getting into it in the locker rooms, and, you know, Mike Tomlin is a saint of a coach. Like how that guy is able to control all the egos that he's had over the years is right. crazy. But Deontay Johnson seems like a diva wide receiver that doesn't have the production to back it up. Like the dude goes, he has the worst stone hands in the most critical moments. Uh. And I just think eventually these teams are going to like, I th- honestly would not be surprised Everyone's saying, oh, he he had more targets than George Pickens last year. George Pickens was a rookie. He's not such an alpha dog. He was a rookie coming off an ACL tear in 2022, right? So Mm -hmm. George Pickens, I think, is the better athlete. I think he's the better talent. And everyone's expecting him to just be better on day one. Deontay Johnson has like five years on George Pickens. Like, what are we doing here? George Pickens has a very real possibility of being the number one for this team in 2023 and beyond. And I don't think it's that crazy that the highlight plays that George Pickens can do are just wild, man. If he can Mm -hmm. get some of the consistency down, he's going to be set. But I mean, you look at his, his stats, 84 targets total, 52 catches for 800 yards, man. 800 yards on 52 catches. The dude was electric. Also had four touchdowns. All these guys have four touchdowns last year. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he was getting 15 yards per catch. It's, it's really impressive what he was able to do. And everyone's kind of, like, claiming Deontay Johnson is going to be the number one. But I'm not completely sold, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I, I, I hear that. but. I you know, <laughs> you know I I do like Pickens, but I, I I believe that there's enough around enough other weapons like they have Najee Harris, you know, like they have they have Pat Fryermuth, and then they just got Darnell Washington, who's going to be another weapon. And I'm not I'm not sure how pass heavy they're going to be. You know, I, I I I do like Pickens, and I feel he could. I feel he's a solid like wide receiver two you know but i i, yeah. I just i i don't I, i'm not sure if he's just going to be that guy i i feel i don't know we will you know, see i i, I yes with I all my hatred of kenny pickett it, it is tough to yeah give a is. lot of fantasy value to george pickens um honestly yes. i could see kenny pickett struggling this year they're gonna put him uh if he struggles again this year I think in 2024, he'll have one final chance. And if he struggles mm-hmm. again, they're going to move on. Like the nice thing about Pittsburgh is they're kind of no nonsense. They did have Ben, ben Roethlisberger for whatever it was, 18 Forever. years or whatever it was. Forever. But yeah. uh, I do think that they realize that they need a quarterback there. And mm-hmm. if Kenny Pickett can't step up this year and everyone's saying, oh, he was so good last year, except he was terrible. You know, like mm-hmm. I we're we're watching two completely different players. I think, but uh, yeah, Kenny Pickett was bad last year. Don't let the uh, the the dynasty narrative get out of hand here. But yeah, I think that George Pickens is more of a long term play than the other guys. Mm-hmm. Like I think Garrett Wilson, even Chris Olave, who we'll talk about here in one second more in depthly. But Drake London, Traylon Burks, I think these guys have more potential mm-hmm. now versus. George Pickens, who I think is probably maybe a year out from being a bona fide superstar. Right. All right. So you want to jump on on Chris Olave here, and we can share some of my fears here well, with this guy. Yeah, and I, I I think Chris Olave is very good. I feel he is he's going to be the next Keenan Allen. He he he's an excellent route runner. He's 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 always open. He knows how to find the soft spot in the in in the defense, and I don't like I I I feel he I mean I'm I'm not saying he's going to be this PPR monster, but he might be. He yeah I you know I I I I feel he's going to be very close to that, and I feel he's going to be 
I, I feel he is the one in that offense. I mean, even though Mike Thomas is still there, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he's injured half the time, but that's beside right. the point. Right. But, but you know, I, I think I, I, I think you're going to be worried about Derek Carr because you loathe Derek Carr. I think even more than Kenny Pickett, actually. So I do not like uh, I do not like Derek Carr, but yeah, I will so, say for for uh, Chris Olave, the problem with Derek Carr is he's kind of a I don't want to cuss. I'll I'll be nice. He's kind of a, a pansy that he doesn't like to throw the ball down the field at all. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's check down Charlie. We'll, we'll call him mm-hmm. that. Check down yeah. Charlie Carr. Um, but. Chris, Ol- Chris Olave is going to just abs like you said, he, he does find the holes in the zone pretty well. So that's going to benefit him pretty heavily, right? But yes, it will. Um, yeah, here's the downside. So one, it's Michael Thomas. Two, Derek Carr, I think, is just not that good. There's a reason that the Raiders were willing to let him go, right? There's a very big reason why. Um mm-hmm. you know, personality, whatever, all that stuff aside from him and in, in uh, McDaniel, their cars always kind of had a personality that just rubs people the wrong way. And, yeah. you know, except for John Gruden, John Gruden loved the guy, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that Derek Carr is just not the answer that everyone thinks it's going to be. He's no better than Andy Dalton, in my opinion, or this okay. offense. Right. Okay, and right. with Andy Dalton, Chris Olave with no Michael Thomas, was the wide receiver number 25. What is his upside that pushes him up to number eight? You know what I mean? What is going to be the massive factor that is going to push him up from 25 to eight? I just don't see that possibility. You know what I mean? So, right. Um, so Chris Olave, I think that he's going to be very, very good, but I just don't think that he's ever going to be as elite as people want him to. I hear that, but I think that isn't true. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you know, I, 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 I believe he's going to get more targets. He's going to get more receptions. He's probably, I mean. Then who? I mean, he, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, then just his rookie season, like he oh, got yeah. like a hundred, you know, you 119. know, 120 targets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he's going to get more targets. He's going to get more receptions. You know, like the yards can stay there, but like he's gonna get more targets mm-hmm. and, and 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 interceptions. He's probably gonna score more, a couple more touchdowns a year. So, you know, yeah, like, those are just vols. You, know, you, you never know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and even and the that, best that, receivers are usually around like six to seven. Yeah, so yeah. there's a few more. Yeah, so, I, I'm with you, but I just don't. So, so so you know, I can I can see him being a low end wide receiver one every year for the next. 10 yeah, years. that's where I just think. I think he's that, a mid it's, 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 uh, it's Keenan it's, 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 it's Keenan Allen. It's Keenan Allen. Yeah, but Keenan. He's Keenan Allen. He's Keenan Allen. Big man. <laughs> like I don't know. Chris Olave. How, he's six <laughs> one. How? How? Yeah, but I, to be fair I, though, to be fair, Keenan Allen always had a better quarterback than what Chris Olave is going to have for most of his career, probably. Like Philip Rivers was good at least. You know what I mean? I I I, I don't disagree with that, but but good quarterback players, play does come into it a little it, bit. It does, it does. But if you're a good player, that's gonna trump a little bit whatever is going on. At right, that's what I'm saying. I think that he's gonna be a, a wide receiver too, despite his situation. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. he's gonna solid be a solid like 16 to 20 every year. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't see him. I just don't see him as a wide receiver one. Like, there's too many other guys that are more. They have more upside, you know. What I mean, they're they're right. they're more explosive. They get targeted down the field more. They're more touchdown threats. Like I, that's the problem with Chris Olave. Maybe he gets a few more targets. Maybe he gets a few more catches, but his yardage could go up a little bit. But you're you're talking about twenty five to eight, where he's currently ranked. That's just that's too big of a gap. Um, that. Derek Carr is not going to be able to overcome. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. without Michael Thomas. You take Michael Thomas into account. Let's say he stays healthy. It's it's possible. You know, <laughs> I I wouldn't bet on it. But let's say he plays like 15, 13 to 15 games this upcoming year. He's going to take a massive portion of the targets from this offense. Alvin Kamara 
is going to eat some when he does get back from his suspension. Kendra Miller, who we love, is going to eat up some mm-hmm. there. Um, Foster Moreau, who this team is very high on if he plays this year. It's just a very tight situation, in my opinion, for a massive uptick in targets, personally. So right. that's the only thing with, with him. I do get the argument for him, but again, people have him as the number two in this class right now, above Drake London, above Traylon mm-hmm. Burks, and above Jamison Williams. I'd take all three of those guys above him just because I think that their ceiling is massively higher. You know, Drake London was about the same wide receiver as Chris Olave with a much worse situation than what Chris Olave was given in year one. Right. So that that's my only thoughts there. I just think that we're crowning Chris Olave way too quickly. And if I could sell Chris Olave right now at a premium of wide receiver eight, yes, please. There's no way he's going to live up to that. And you're going to be cashing out so like, mega. So, so like for you, like what would be a fair trade for Chris Olave? For me, well, that's the que- that's the problem. Well, I don't I mean, have Chris I mean, Olave I mean, to give him right, away, <laughs> right? right. Like, well, well, so I mean, what I'd be paying to get him is way different from yeah. what he's worth, right? So I don't so, know what he's worth. So, like, what would be the premium that that like someone would be trying to like? Get? If I could get Quentin Johnston, I think I'd rather have Quentin Johnston over Chris Olave. Okay, so that's like I would. I I mean, I I think I would rather have Chris Olave. Because I know he's going to right. be the wide receiver Jordan one. Addison he's going to get those targets. And Quentin yeah. Johnson, I'd rather have them than Chris Olave. And okay. it's close, but though you're talking like a mid first round pick. I think a lot yeah. of people are in your boat, though, that they'd rather have Chris Olave. And that's what I'm saying. So you're looking at like a the JSN or Chris Olave, you know? Like right. it's a in a non non super flex, you're talking about like pick number three or four. Um right. which if I could do that. I would be doing, I'd rather have Chris Olave than JSN right now. Um, just my fears that I talked about a little bit earlier, but yeah. you know, pick number four, if I could get Quentin Johnson for Chris Olave, that's what I would be looking at personally. Right. But I think you can sell him for more than that is what I'm kind of leaning yeah. toward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I get it. I do. I do see the potential, but, uh, I'm just trying to be a little bit more <laughs> realistic, you know. I'm right, just right. I'm not on the 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 rocket ship to the moon yet. Right. <laughs> I'm still on earth. This uh All right, so last next tier of guys here we're going to talk about Christian Watson, Sky Moore and Jahan Dotson. These two three guys um are a little bit more interesting. They're kind of in a tier of their own based on last year and these guys are tough. Sky Moore is the hardest of this group, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. he struggled mightily for most of the season. Um, yes. Played in 16 games, but really never saw much usage, but is a second-round pick going into year number two with Patrick Mahomes on probably the best offense in the NFL. Only had 22 catches last year for 250 yards, still decent. Um, no touchdowns, but... You can what he did in the postseason. He went off in in the right. postseason for the team. Then compare that to Christian Watson, right? And the Packers did they miss the playoffs, right? I'm not yes, crazy there. Yep. Okay, Christian Watson started off on you know he had the hamstring injury, dropped the bomb touchdown in week number one, um, mm-hmm. had three or four massive performances, and then just kind of disappeared after that extremely boomer bust. I mean, I think uh, someone did the calculations that he had 50% of his, his fantasy production on four plays, five plays, which is crazy. Right. Right. (laughs) Like that's wild. Um, So Christian Watson is another guy, very, very boomer bust, kind of hard to project. And then Jahan Dotson, the last guy, very solid year one, a little bit of an outlier in the touchdowns, but, you know, again, a more of a, a yak guy than some of the mm-hmm. others where he had 35 catches for 523 yards, averaging 15 yards per catch, but had seven touchdowns last year. Crazy. Did a lot of work with, um, with uh, Carson Wentz before, you know, he, I think Jahan Dotson got injured while Carson Wentz got got replaced and then kind of 
had to get a little bit of rapport with um, Taylor Heineke in the last half of the mm-hmm. season there. But, I mean, the dude's a, he has a nose for the end zone. So what are your thoughts on these three guys, and uh, who? how do you rank them? Um, yeah, yeah, like these guys are tricky. You know, um, I mean, I would probably, I mean, I really like, I uh, like, um, I mean, I'm not a huge Sky Moore guy. I really wasn't coming, uh, you know, go, going into that draft, right. you know. Um, he got boosted up like he, crazy. Yeah, he did. And, you know, I do like Christian this Watson. And, <sighs> yeah, hey, fair. So, <laughs> hey, that that's fair. Um, I would rather have Zay Flowers, though, because I know Zay Flowers can actually play football. Actually, agree with you <laughs> so so you know um yeah sky Moore. i'm out on sky Moore. i think i would almost rather have Kadarius tony at this point really so, i mean probably probably not i would probably still okay. take sky Moore. but you know but I, I i think like at this point the wide receivers for the kansas it's for the chiefs don't really matter you know because i feel yeah. it's going to be it, it, i feel i feel it's going to be one game with this guy another game with this guy mm-hmm. you know like it's Eventually it's not going to be will. <laughs> Eventually. yeah right so um and then and then with christian watson i mean he's going to be what jordan love has <laughs> you know just mm-hmm. to be honest i mean it's going to be him and uh i think Jaden reed and romeo Dobbs, off, yeah. who we're yeah. going to talk about here in just a minute right so um yeah so I mean, I really do like like Dotson. I I think of those three, you know, I would probably the do most? Dotson, Watson. Yeah, I, yeah, I would, yeah, I would do Dotson, Watson, more. You know, in in that in that <laughs> a, in that sounds trio. like a law firm. It yeah, it does. Unfortunately, <laughs> it, it it definitely does. So yeah, I mean, I I I really do like uh, Dotson. I I I I think he has a lot of potential. You know, I I think he came out swinging uh, er, er, early last year, and he's going to show potential with. Uh, Sam Howell slash yeah. Jacoby Brissett. Or Trey Lance. Or Trey Lance. <laughs> I'm willing that into existence. Well, I, I would I would say if 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 your dream does come true with Trey Lance, I think his value goes down a little bit. In Washington? Personally. Yeah. I don't know how good Trey Lance is throwing the ball. Haven't you seen all the clips? He uh he fixed his uh throwing motion. He actually I'll looks- believe Go, um, I will be, anybody out I'll there, believe it once he's on the field. Yeah, fair. Uh, anybody out there, they are doing some of the OTAs and stuff. Uh, Grant Cohn, I think his name is. Uh, he's a beat writer for San Francisco. He posted, I think, like a minute-long clip edited together of a few passes that Trey Lance did at practice yesterday. And, man, his throwing motion looks good. He went to Patrick Mahomes' uh, quarterback coach this offseason. And... Uh, they said that you know this guy's uh, universally known for fixing some of the throwing motion issues that these quarterbacks have, and he was able to. It looks so far, and he's still working with the guy, as far as I'm aware. That yeah, he's really fixed his throwing motion, and he looks really good throwing the ball. So um, I do love to see that. You know, uh, just side little love for Trey Lance there, but yeah, Jahan Dotson though. Trey Lance or not, I do think him or Sam Howell, um, whoever the quarterback is here, if you know Sam Howell's only a one-year wonder and they go and get Drake May next year, for example, I think he's going to be a very valuable player long-term. And then you look at the depth chart here. I mean, Terry McLaurin, I like Terry McLaurin, but he is currently 27. He's going to be going yes, on 28 this year. Yes. Um, and Curtis Samuel Showing a few flashes here and there, but he's more of a slot guy. Jahan Dotson is a very good wide receiver, too. I don't know if he can be a number one for the offense, though. I think that's where you need someone like a Terry McLaurin opposite him, but I do think it's a, just a, a very good powerhouse tandem between these two. Um, yeah. And I'm probably with you. I'd probably take Dotson, Watson, then more. So, um, what are your, how are you valuing Jahan Dotson, Christian Watt? Like, what are you willing to pay for all three of these guys? Well, I, I feel that Dotson went around, went in the early second round a lot last year. You know, yeah, I saw late a, first, you know, early I, I, second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, I would maybe do like a late first for him. Like, you I wouldn't would, be like, okay. suit. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I honestly would. Like, if you had like, the 111 I would mm-hmm. trade yeah I would I would I I, w- I would try to go for Dotson okay you know I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not sure if that gets it done 
because I, I know it would to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would be very happy with that. Like honestly. a first round pick for, for him is, uh, is that's, that's right in the range of like Jonathan Mingo. Um, yeah. Josh Downs sometimes. Uh, yeah. You know, Marvin Mims. Like, I'd probably rather have Mims than Dotson personally, but right. other than that, mm-hmm. I'm right with you. I'd rather have Dotson there. Christian Watson, unfortunately, I think you're gonna have to give a first to get him, and I don't oh, think he's absolutely. worth it. Un- like un- I do un- not. Yeah, think he's unfortunately, worth it. yeah. It's it's it would it would. I mean, I don't. I think it'd be like a mid first. Like I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy, but you know, I can see like the 107, I could, 106. I could see like the one ten maybe getting it done. Like a Zay Flowers, like maybe, yeah. If you're giving, if it's like a Zay Flowers for Christian Watson, I could see them moving on for that. But I don't even know that man. I, people that have Watson are just kind of irrational right now. They think that his, like I said, five plays were fifty percent of his right. fantasy production, and it's absolutely they they see gold. You know what I mean? They just they have uh, the dollar signs in their eyes, and that's all they see. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I don't know if you're really going to be able to get much, but I mean, you look at the the comparisons. Uh, Watson had 41 catches for 611 yards. Dotson had 35 catches for 523 yards. Both had seven touchdowns. So, mm. you know, they were very similar players. And again, I think Dotson's probably cheaper than Watson is. And then Sky right. Moore, yeah, if I can get someone was offering me Sky Moore for a late second, and I think I kept the second so that just kind of tells you <laughs> how i feel about him he is worth a shot i guess you know late second is probably fair value for sky Moore. you know that's your your josh dotson and a or josh downs i mean cedric mm-hmm. tillman range and a super flex and you know sky Moore definitely has upside with patrick mahomes versus those other couple yeah. of guys but Absolutely. at the same time yeah, we, it was not a good year one, so it's hard to. And like you said, the the receivers don't matter much there. So um, late second is probably fair for more, but it's hard to <laughs> pull the trigger on that. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. All right, two last guys I want to talk about quickly. Wandale Robinson with the New York Giants and then mm-hmm. Romeo Dobbs with the uh, Green Bay Packers. Christian Watson, we'll talk about Dobbs first here. I think that he's potentially the better player than than Watson. Am I crazy Agreed. here? Um, I, I I I think I think Watson is more the home run guy compared to Dobbs yeah, being the, yeah. Like yeah. Um, they both had there were one difference in catches, right? Uh, yeah, they were very similar players, but you know, Romeo Dobbs is more of the possession guy versus Watson, like you said, is more the deep threat kind of explodes after the catch kind of guy. But mm-hmm. we have no idea who Jordan Love's gonna favor in this offense and I do think that people are are completely writing off Romeo Dobbs because of Jaden mm-hmm. Reed and uh Christian Watson. I think this guy could be solid, like a very solid, you know, wide receiver 3 for fantasy football. Um yeah. has a little bit more upside as a flex player there, but I could see him scoring more points than Christian Watson. I really really good with Jordan Love. Maybe not, maybe that's crazy. Jordan Love does have a pretty good deep ball, but yeah, I don't know. Hey, what are your thoughts on Dobbs? Yeah, I I, th- I think Dobbs could be really. I mean, I, I of the two, he's definitely the cheaper one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, he's like a third I, round I, I, pick, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I I I I think that would be, you know, definitely so, so something fair for him. So sure, you know, you know, I'll I'll. I'll, I'll Honestly, like it would probably be like a later. Well, I mean, it w- it would probably be a. Well, I'm, I'm actually here on a keep trade cut. And, okay. And, you know, I'm just I'm just kind of look. It's it's kind of looking like a like a late second, early third would. Yeah, that feels about right. I mean, yeah, just, yeah, know, honestly, honestly, and like you know, with the with the you know. With how much wide receiver fluctuates, you know, I, 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 I think, I think all depending on your situation, that like Dobbs wouldn't be a bad piece to have, no, you know, and any no. and he's, he's a good, signi- solid lottery, team. yes, and and he's significantly cheaper than right. Watson. Yes, yeah, yeah. We just talked about getting Christian Watson for like a mid second is what we feel comfortable giving up for him, right? Yeah. And this guy's a, a late second, so, um, you know, it's gonna 
cost you a, you know, first round one nine or better for Watson. Mm -hmm. And yeah, oh, yeah. again, this is going to cost you a late second, early third. Give me that yeah. all day. So oh, yes, yeah, 100%. Romeo Dobbs is somebody worth watching. Just wanted to highlight him um, here in this episode mm -hmm. because I didn't have him rank last year, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have him in my top four wide receiver tiers, you know, top 12 guys. Um, this year I kind of went a little bit deeper than, than last year in terms of my rookie rankings. But, you know, last year I only ranked 12 guys, did not have Dobbs up there, but I did feel like he was worth a shout out here. Yeah, 100%. Um, and then the last guy is uh, Wandale Robinson. Wandale is a little tough. He was very good in a very short stretch of, of games there, but he was very injured last year. Um, very, yes. He's probably healthy. He played six games, got 31 targets in those six games, which actually is not bad there. But I guess that's kind of massively <laughs> offset by one of them being 13 targets. But that was the last game before he got injured. So... Um, what are our thoughts on, on Wandale Robinson going into year number I two? I think there's two, I think there's too many potential breakouts. Slots. <laughs> yeah. Slots, slots in, in New York to really right. know who's going to be the guy. Yeah. So, you know, um, I mean, that, 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 that that's the biggest thing. So <laughs> it's also Daniel know. Jones, right? <laughs> It's still Daniel Jones. Yeah, it's Jones. Daniel Jones. Yeah, it's Daniel I mean, I think Daniel Jones will have more passing touchdowns this year. Will he? You know, I, he had 15 last year, Calvin. Yeah, but why is it going to go had, up? That's the question. I feel I feel like I just feel it, I just, feel just because he's know, another year it, older, right? <laughs> the, I guess Darren right, Waller's right. there, so that'll help. Right, right, and I do feel that's going to help, and, and and you know I think that's going to help open up the field a little bit. And my problem with the Giants is they just they they added so many slot guys. It's like how is this going to help Daniel many. Jones? You know what I mean? Like they're right. not good and in it, space necessarily. Like they're not they're good when it's a long field, you know, where they can kind of work and get open in the red zone. I feel like having this many slot guys is going to be a detriment to your offense. Oh, it will. But it will. I don't know. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Would you rather have Wandale Robinson or Jalen Hyatt? Or who? Jalen Hyatt. Or Jalen Hyatt. Um, I think I'd rather have Jalen Hyatt. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like the Wandale. Come, uh, I thought Wandale was interesting coming out. You know, um, I, I thought he played really well mm -hmm. his last year at, at, at Kentucky with Will Levis. But, um, <laughs> you know, I I like. You know, I like the talent. I thought he, I thought he was good. You know, um, sure. but I think there's, you know, with injuries, with the murkiness at, at, at every, you know, at, at, at the slot slash wide receiver position mm -hmm. in, um, you know, in, uh, in New York. You know, I think I would. I think I think Hyatt at least gives you better value, at least. Yeah. And they took you know, Hyatt in does. third, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, that's the, the tough thing. Like projecting this, this offense has so many of these guys. It's ridiculous. Like Darius Slayton's going to be a, a dedicated outside guy. He does not play in the slot, but Paris Campbell, Wandale Robinson and Jalen Hyatt, I would project Jalen Hyatt plays on the outside, not in the slot. So then Paris Campbell and Wandale Robinson are fighting for the slot. I think Paris Campbell's probably better than Wandale, right? So yeah. at least Jalen Hyatt has a path to three wide receiver sets versus Wandale, I think is kind of left out. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts here on him as well. I do think that Wandale is probably more valuable than Jalen Hyatt. So if you have Wandale and you can go get Hyatt, I would definitely be looking at doing that. But yeah, yeah, that's where it, it's tough. It, this offense is, <laughs> it's going to be, flipping a coin right so we have no mm -hmm. idea who's going to be what yeah no i agree all right any last thoughts on the receivers um no i i i believe i have said all that needs to be said uh one last name to keep in mind uh really quickly is john mechie um yep. you know he was yeah. a third round pick by the houston texans last year ends up getting leukemia um in training camp or or the off season of last year has to go through chemo and all that stuff. And thankfully, 
Uh, he's fully recovered, mm-hmm. supposedly, um, health-wise from that. So whether he's fully recovered for a football career, that's another another question entirely. But, you know, people liked John Mechie quite a bit last year. And unfortunately with that, we never got to see what he was able to do. But he's kind of a dark horse where – he has the potential with CJ Stroud to take a massive, you know, be a massive contributor to this offense that is lacking for weapons, but mm-hmm. at the same time, you got to just be realistic, right? He had leukemia, had, went through chemo and all that stuff. So, is he going to be in the best of physical shape, you know, how long is it going to take him to kind of ramp up and all that stuff? So, I don't have any answers for that, but he is worth keeping on your radar. You know, yeah. if you can if you can send 100%. a a third round pick like an early third for John Mechie is just a stab in the dark. I'd be willing to do that completely. I do think that John Mechie is a pretty good player. Yeah, agreed. All right, tight ends. There's only two guys I really want to talk about here today. Um, my tight end rankings from last year: I had Trey McBride number one, Greg Dulcich number two, Jelani Woods as number three, and Jeremy Rucker as number four, and then uh, Kate Otten was number five for that draft class. You know, tight ends, not many of these guys have done anything really substantial. No, unfortunately. And that's kind of the MO with tight ends. So yeah. Greg Dulcich and Trey McBride are the only two I really want to talk about. Jelani Woods in Indy, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not even going to yeah, waste it's, time it's, it's, talking it's, about that. It's, fair enough. Jeremy Rucker is the number four guy there in New York, yeah. but I think he's got talent maybe in a couple years. I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean – I, Jeremy Ruckert's like another Ohio State guy. You know, he is yeah. he's very talented, but uh, but he was battling a lot of injuries last right. year. And I mean, which, he's also he, he's not going to beat out C.J. Uzama and Tyler Conklin like as a rookie. There's no right. way, no right, way. Those right. guys are good, right? Um, right? And they're still useless for fantasy. So that's how great the right. tight end position is. But Greg Dulcich is actually kind of interesting. Um, People would probably rank him as the number one tight end from this draft class. And the only reason I wanted to bring him up specifically is he was solid as a rookie. Um, Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson likes to target the tight end position. And I would say that Greg Dulcich is the best of these tight ends. Like Albert Oguebanam is not the answer. And we talked about this last year. I had my concerns and they, Albert O did not live up to the billing. Everyone was head over heels in love with Albert O last year, and it did not live up. Right. But Greg Dulcich, you know, there's been rumors that Sean Payton is not the biggest fan of Greg Dulcich either. <laughs> so, um, right. so that makes me a little concerned there. Uh, there was rumors that they tried to trade for Juwan Johnson from the Saints. So Greg Dulcich oh, yeah. is probably probably being crowned a little bit too prematurely. I want to see what this offense looks like with Sean Payton before I'm really yeah. investing in Greg yeah. Dulcich. Um, Weird Al Yankovic over here. I like the talent and I like the ability a lot. And I thought he showed a, quite a few flashes, but people that are are kind of just assigning him as the starters role are are crazy to me. Um, any thoughts on Greg D? Yeah, I, I think he he has the potential to be really interesting. Um, you know, um I think there's a lot of a lot of mouths to feed in Denver. I'll just say that. Right. You know, and I'm not sure if Greg Dulcich is gonna be one of those that gets fed quite a bit. Yeah, that's so, the, yeah, right. Yeah, fifty five targets though as a rookie is pretty solid. Like it, that's yeah, yeah, really it, good it for a rookie. It is it is, but you know, I but there was also a lot of injuries with Denver, a lot of a lot of Fair. stuff going on that yeah tim patrick being out last year was yeah. was huge marquez yeah. calloway he's here he's here on this team <laughs> i see it on the depth chart yeah, that's the guy go. we were talking there about with the, with the saints um sorry just saw that it's yeah kind of funny um but yeah i, I do think that tim patrick it, it all depends though right you know there's been the rumors all off season of them trading Cortland sutton or jerry judy i really think they're gonna trade Cortland sutton to be honest with you um, I just, I don't really see how he fits in this offense. You got Tim Patrick, who is, yeah. you know, Portland Sutton. They're the same type of, of player, right? Player. Yeah. Um, so we'll see, but yeah, I think that people are, are crowning Greg Dulcich. He's still only a year two tight end. You know, let's, let's ease the brakes a little bit on him. Same with Trey McBride. I do like Trey McBride a lot. 
the question is going to be, what's he going to be worth, right? What's he going to be able to do this year? Now, there's a whole new offensive system. The starting quarterback, Kyler Murray, is injured. He's not going to play for X amount of games. Colt McCoy is mm. currently injured, too, so that leaves currently Jeff Driscoll or David Blau is the number one. David Blau, yeah. TB12. Great. Um, they're terrible, right? So it's not a great offense on paper right now. The offensive line is still kind of banged up. They did get Paris Johnson in the draft, which mm-hmm. is going to help. But, you know, they're still probably two offensive linemen away from being middle of the NFL, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's not great when you're in that situation. Um, so I just don't know that Trey McBride – I think that a lot of people are kind of treating him like Cole Komet from a couple years ago where they're expecting a massive uptick in targets and everything. And uh, again, I'm not, I'm not buying into that until I can kind of see it a little bit. And um, sure. yeah. Well, I, I, I think the big thing though, is that who is whatever quarterback going to throw to, I mean, you know, this offense is not bad. DeAndre Hopkins I'm is not, still there, right? I for know, now, but for now, yeah. Rondale Moore, um, Hollywood Brown, Hollywood. They've yeah, got but it's, James it's, Conner, who's gonna, got good hands. Yeah, it's just going to be completely different. I, 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 I can agree. see him. I, I can, I can see him fitting into the into the Zach Ertz role of last year and the year before Fair. pretty well. Fair. So um, Zach Ertz is still here as well. I know he um, is still there. But yeah. It, it's possible that Trey McBride has a solid season. It is entirely possible. And I am willing to miss out on 60 catches for 600 yards just because I don't think that even if he has that, it's not going to be game breaking for the tight end position. Right. So um, mm. there is a world where in two years time, I think that he could, but honest question, who would you rather have from, from tight end? Would you rather have Trey McBride or, uh, Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer. 100%. Agreed. Trey McBride or yeah. Sam Laporta? I, I I'd would rather probably have rather have. Uh, yeah, I would rather have Sam Laporta. Yeah. Yeah. So then you've got guys next year like Brock Bowers coming in. So it's just I don't see a realistic world where Trey McBride breaks into the top twelve. And if you're not oh, going to no, get, no. if you're not going to get yeah. a top eight dynasty tight end you're probably not going to have anything worth rostering yeah. really you know so right if you right. can sell trey mcbride for because people are starting to hype him up as a cole Komet type of player i'd be looking to do that as well all right any last thoughts here on the rookie rankings we finally made it through all my 2022 next year we're gonna have to break this out into four shows man this is yep. too many we I, probably we more rookies. We, we probably will have to, and then we'll probably have to roast each other. So yeah, it's, it's, next it's, year it's, it's all gonna be good. Next year, yeah. you gotta slap your nuts on the table, and we'll see how hey, this goes. I, I can't, I can't wait to see how wrong I am. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all <laughs> funny games until. Uh, yeah, the the problem is. is too. We might, and one thing, uh, if you guys have have kept with us this long, thank you guys so much for that. But one thing I want to look at too is. Now that I'm actually doing rankings for these rookies, you know, I have 2022, I have top 12 of every position there or top six, you know, like I don't have 12 quarterbacks Mm -hmm. from last year, Uh, but, you know, I have 12 running backs, 12 receivers and all that. I want to review this, this uh, rookie class in like two years time, you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. see just quickly how these guys are panning out because again, oh no. I plugged my one second. There we go. Now I can hear again. Um, but the the wide receivers we talked about already: Drake London, Jameson Williams, Traylon Burks were mine one, two, and three. Right? I have mm-hmm. no idea how those guys are going to finish. People are putting Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave above them, but it's still in the realm of possibility that those are the three best receivers. We just have no idea. It's too early, right? Um, right. after this year, we'll have a better idea. And then after year three, we'll have a very definitive idea of how those guys are going to shake out. Right. So, yes. um, yes. I want to go back and look at that. W- one thing we're going to do over the next few years is track this progress. So you're going to be with us on that journey. 2023, we did a lot more rankings of these players. So we're going to have a lot mm-hmm. more to pull from in 2024 and 2025 
to see where our process is right, where we're kind of wrong, things like that. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's going to be fun tracking this over the next couple of years. Let us know your thoughts. Any last thoughts from you, Dale, before we jump out of here? All right. So that said, thank you guys for joining us again. If you made it this far, we appreciate you guys trying to grow this podcast all off season long. Again, helping you set up for this upcoming season. You know, there's a lot of narratives out there and they're not always the best. Right. And weeding through that and being, Level headed is the hardest thing to do in the off season because it's right. hype, 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 right? And it's all gas, no brakes. And sometimes you need just a mm-hmm. little bit of brakes just to make sure you're not careening over the edge of the cliff, right? So right. that said, thank you guys so much for joining us. Find us on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin at Dynasty underscore Dale. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can to help with the podcast. Tell about us to one of your friends and Yeah, whatever you can to help us grow, we appreciate you guys. Until next time, have a good night.